Hello and welcome to the May issue of The Dot Report from Dot Security. In our first story this month, we discuss how the FBI seized and subsequently lost control over Breach Forum's domains. Then we'll review the reappearance of the Grando Rayro banking trojan. After that, we'll take a look at the 400,000 Linux servers compromised over a period of 14 years. And last on the docket this month, we zoom in on the 11 vulnerabilities recently uncovered in GE ultrasound machines. Let's dive right in. On May 15th, the FBI and international law enforcement agencies seized all Breach Forum's domains for the second time in a 12-month period. After the illicit site was dismantled in June of 2023, threat actors known as Baphomet and Shiny Hunters collaborated to relaunch the site. This site is a notorious playground for cyber criminals looking to trade stolen data, and as such, the lawful cyber raid on breach forums conducted earlier this month felt like a big win in the fight against cybercrime on an international scale. Earlier this week, however, breach forums already resurfaced, reclaiming clearnet domains and returning to operations. With these latest developments, the ball is once again in the FBI's court, but this ferocious resurgence emphasizes the resilience of these cybercrime syndicates and the challenges faced by law enforcement in halting these operations altogether. Even so, how the FBI moves forward is going to be crucial in this ongoing battle. The Grando Rayro banking trojan is back. Since March, cybercriminals linked to Grando Rayro have launched a global phishing campaign targeting over 1,500 banks across more than 60 countries. Previously focused on Latin America, Spain, and Portugal, the Trojans' recent expansion suggests a strategic response to the attempts made by Brazilian authorities to dismantle its infrastructure. Along with this volume phishing campaign, significant enhancements in the malware itself have also been discovered. These include updates to its string decryption and domain generating algorithms, as well as ability to exploit Microsoft Outlook clients on infected systems, which can then further spread additional phishing emails. Once installed, the Trojan establishes persistence within the Windows registry and uses an updated DGA to connect with a command and control server. This allows remote control of the infected system, file operations, and the activation of specialized modes, including email account takeover, through Microsoft Outlook. This is what makes the Grand Array Row Trojan specifically dangerous and underscores the importance of implementing strict identity access management rules and multi-factor authentication protocols. Research by ESET recently revealed that the eBury malware botnet has compromised around 400,000 Linux servers over the past 14 years. This sophisticated malware is involved in various illicit activities, including cryptocurrency theft, spam distribution, credit card fraud, and credential harvesting. eBury's stealthy nature allows it to remain undetected for long periods of time, which poses a significant risk to affected systems. The malware serves as a backdoor and allows threat actors to take a variety of damaging actions without being noticed. The prolonged existence of such a widespread botnet highlights the need for advanced network monitoring and a layered approach to cybersecurity. On May 14th, the researchers at Nozomi Networks announced the discovery of 11 security vulnerabilities in GE ultrasound machines, further raising concern about the security of network-enabled medical devices. The severity of these flaws is noteworthy as they could allow threat actors to access sensitive patient data, medical records, and worst of all, shut down critical equipment. The most severe vulnerability, CVE-2024-27107, involves hard-coded credentials that can be exploited to gain unauthorized access. Other critical issues include command injection, path traversal execution with unnecessary privileges, and failures in protection mechanisms. Nozomi Networks demonstrated how these flaws could be used in an exploit chain to gain local access to devices and execute arbitrary code, highlighting the potential for significant security breaches. GE Healthcare, however, has acknowledged these vulnerabilities and issued advisories asserting that existing mitigation processes reduce associated risks to acceptable levels. However, this story once again calls into question the security capabilities of IoT devices and their application in the medical industry. That wraps it up for us this month, so thanks for watching. I'm Andrew Mancini with Dot Security, and this has been the Dot Report.